Hi guys, happy Monday. I hope that you're all having an amazing start to your week. Welcome back to my channel. Today we have a good old fashioned MMQA. I got some questions from Instagram. I got some questions from YouTube. So we have loads to talk about. Now this video might seem like a handbag collection video only because I got quite a few questions on the pieces that I own. So I do have eye candy. Plus I want to talk about some bags that have caught my attention these last couple of weeks. Um, now you guys might end up hearing my AC kick on throughout the video. Hopefully it's not too loud. Hopefully it doesn't end up drowning me out. It's just uh, currently, I have uh, my fan going on right now because today is hotter than Hades. It is disgusting. Hence why the hair is half up and it looks like Shiza. It just feels... It's not, um, yeah, it's not, um, it's not good. <laughs> it's definitely not good. So anywho, I digress. Like I said, we have loads to talk about, so let's get this show on the road, shall we? Starting with the first question. Is social media ruining luxury bags? Okay. Uh, there are many aspects of social media that I love and appreciate. I love the fact that you're able to connect with like-minded individuals from all across the world, uh, and you're able to form friendships and relationships, and I think it's amazing. Um, but when it comes to luxury goods, I do feel that social media is ruining it in a sense, just because, and this is something that we've touched base on before, it seems like there is so much that is readily available for our eyeballs to see than ever before, that in a way, it almost feels like fast fashion because there's there's so much new coming out. There's new collections, there's new pieces, there's unboxings, there's, there's just so much, again, that's out there that I feel that it makes it feel like fast fashion. Now, as I've said in other videos, it could be because that is what I am a part of, that is what I choose to follow on social media, obviously handbag accounts and you know this, this and that. So it's something that I am a part of, so that's why I think I see it so often versus someone who doesn't care about luxury goods, I don't think they would end up uh, saying the same, but it's almost because I'm so immersed in it that I end up seeing it so often that it might seem like fast fashion. There's just, there's just so much. I don't know. Before, I mean, there weren't as many videos. Obviously, there weren't um, tons of accounts and tons of hashtags and tons of this that you can end up following for whatever it is that you were looking for. It just seemed like there was a lot less. Uh, it, it, and I'm only speaking for myself. Um, I think before items felt special, a lot more special than now. Now, again, I'm only speaking for myself. Now it seems like no sooner have I unboxed a bag and I'm already looking at something else. So it's, it's almost like, um, it, it kind of creates a frenzy on its own with myself. Uh, so I think, I think it is. I definitely think it is. I think it's taking away from uh, how special some items might be and other aspects of uh, social media that I'm personally not too fond of uh, is how one item, uh, especially if, a, if an influencer, and you guys know how I feel about that word, if an influencer deems an item to be trash, it is automatically trash across the board because that person said so. Like, that, that doesn't make... That doesn't make sense to me, you know? Like, just because someone doesn't like something, that doesn't mean that everyone has to stand behind them and hate it too, you know? Uh, and I think that that happens a lot on social media. You see that happen. People either jump on the hate train or they jump on the love train. It doesn't necessarily have to be always negative. Um, and sometimes I think that people make things out bigger to be than what they should be. They make it seem like it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. And I'm including myself in that because obviously I'm a part of this... Um, social media world. Uh, but it just, it's, I feel like there's, there are so many extremes when it comes to social media. It's either love, 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 or hate, hate, hate. It's never like in the middle. And with luxury goods, I definitely see that. Um, either because someone said something is terrible or because someone said it's amazing. It has to be amazing. It's kind of like the whole emperor's new clothes thing comes to mind. Uh, but, um, besides that, I just, I, I really can't reiterate enough that it definitely ends up seeming like fast fashion when you end up meshing those two together. And I think it might get worse as time goes by just because again, there is so much out there for us to see. Hopefully not. Hopefully, um, 
I'm completely wrong, but uh, that's just the way that I see it right now. Uh, but I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on this. Do you think that social media is ruining luxury goods? Do you think it's taking away from it? Whatever the case may be, let us know in the comment section down below. Next question, what do you think about the Fendace collection? Am I saying that correctly? Fendi Versace, Fendace, right? Hopefully, hopefully I'm not butchering it. But this collection recently launched, what, three or four days ago, and I first heard about it in September of last year, and I was really, really excited about it. And in my opinion, it definitely didn't disappoint. I think it is beyond fabulous and a perfect marriage of both of those fashion houses, both Fendi and Versace. I mean, you have the chicness of Fendi and then you have the over the top, the gaudiness of uh, Versace and they just... They just meshed them so well together. It's a perfect blend and I, I think it's awesome. I think it is absolutely awesome and it was executed brilliantly in my opinion. It is just, I know it's not everyone's cup of tea. I've heard people say it's beyond gaudy, it's way too over the top, but I definitely don't think so. I am a sucker for everything that came out from their clothing to their accessories to their handbags, everything. I absolutely love it all and if I had all the money in the world, I would, I would go for all of the pieces just because I am that big of a fan. And some of my favorite pieces are the sunshine toe in all of them, really. Whether it's the Fendi monogram with the crystal medusa or the pink uh, sunshine tote with the Versace uh, motif. Uh, and I also love the black leather with the, um, with the gold, um, with the gold uh, printing on there. But um, my favorite bag out of all of them has definitely got to be the crystal baguette. Oh my goodness. Well, all the baguettes that they came out with, I thought were beautiful. They almost all have crystals, uh, whether it's the micro um, with the extra chain, but my favorite, like I said before, is definitely the crystal baguette. And it comes in at $4,200, but I think it is just beyond stunning. It does have the black suede leather and the crystals on there are just, they're, they're gorgeous. They have almost like an ombre uh, look to them. Almost everything I think at this point has been sold out. I don't know if they're gonna be restocking it. Hopefully they do. And if I get the chance to get my hands on that baguette, I will. <laughs> I absolutely will because I think it is beyond gorgeous. So um, I can really talk about this collection until the cows come home. I think it's beautiful. I love the pieces and um, I really I really hope that uh, they end up doing this in the future as well. Uh, I'll do another, uh, another uh, collection because it is just, it's awesome. They they really ended up meshing both of those fashion houses perfectly. Uh, it's not like you're looking at it and you're like, oh, what is going on? I, I, I can only see Versace, I can only see Fendi, definitely not. You can see both of them uh, and I, I think it's wonderful. So I am a huge fan. What about you guys? Are you a fan of this, uh, of this collection? Did you get anything from this collection? Whatever the case may be, let us know in the comment section down below. Next question, which handbag have you used the most so far in 2022? Uh, all right, so there hasn't been one bag that has been in heavier rotation than the rest. To be completely honest with you, there are about five that are in heavy rotation. And it's not that I'm trying to be cute and I can't make up my mind or anything like that, but legitimately there are five that I end up using, I put them away, and then I seem to go right back into them. Uh, those bags are the Balenciaga Extra small everyday tote. Love that bag. The joy and the ease of being able to use that bag is wonderful. The other is the Lueve small puzzle bag in the scarlet leather. I think I'm going to be doing a review or a what's in my bag on that video soon. So, de uh, so definitely keep an eye out for that one. Uh, the other is the Marc Jacobs small uh, tote bag in the argan oil and the leather. Okay, you guys know that these Marc Jacobs bags are gonna be the, the death of me. As many of you know, I no longer have uh, the red one and the red one was also one that I ended up using uh, quite a bit. But this Argan Oil is fantastic. All the Marc Jacobs bags are amazing and we will be talking about them a little bit later on in the video as well. Uh, the other is the Prada Crystal Bag. Now, I definitely end up using the white one uh, quite a bit as well, but I think that between the two, this one I end up using just a hair more than the white, but um, I'm obsessed. It's, it's such a beautiful bag and come on, it's shiny, it's sparkly, it's definitely my thing. And the other bag that I use quite a bit, I don't think I've ever talked about this on uh, YouTube. I could be wrong, but I have definitely shared it on Instagram. I purchased it, it was either late last year or early this year, I can't remember, but it is this beauty right here. This is the Cara 
armpit, yes, you're hearing that correctly, armpit mesh bag in the silver crystals. This bag is absolutely gorgeous. I think it is stunning. Uh, I do have an organizer in here at the moment. This is an organizer from Samorga for my reissue. And if I didn't have the organizer in here, um, this thing would just kind of bloop. <laughs> flop over and turn into that beautiful mess. Uh, but it is pretty spacious. I'm able to fit all of my daily essentials in here, no problem. Uh, I did want to point out that the crystals, they are not pronged. They're not housed in prongs or anything like that. But I haven't had any of them fall out either. But this thing shines like crazy. I will have to insert a video uh, to show you guys what it looks like in the sun. But it's very comfortable. I love using it. Every time I use it, I get a ton of compliments on it. And um, it also had, it didn't have the craziest price point for a crystal bag either. Um, I believe I got it on sale and I paid a little bit under 400 if I'm not mistaken, but I think that they retail for 425 and they are available in other colors. I just personally like this crystal one or the the silver one or the clear one a lot more. And I will put a link to this bag in the description box below if you guys want to check it out. Um, but this is another one that I use uh, quite, quite often and I'm obsessed. So those five, I am like a moth to the flame <laughs> whenever I end up using them. I just, I, I can't seem to get enough of them. And it'll be interesting to see if these five still stay on top by the end of this, uh, by the end of this year. But those are the ones that I definitely end up, um, have been using the most so far this year. Next question, do you have have a Chanel Deauville. I do. I have two of them. I have one in the gray raffia material in the size large or the 30 centimeter with the black leather trim. And I also have it in the pink mixed raffia material in the size large or the 30 with the pink leather trim. And uh, I've had the gray one for, I want to say maybe four or five years and the pink one for three or four years, if I'm not mistaken. And out of the two, I definitely end up using the gray a lot more often. And I have thought about selling the pink one. I used it three weeks ago and I still enjoy the bag, but um, I don't know, even though I love pink, I just, I don't really, I don't really end up using this bag too, too often. I love the fact that it does have the metallic threads throughout, um, you know, throughout the front here. But um, yeah, I don't really, I don't use this bag as much as I do the gray one. Maybe it's because of the color. The gray definitely ends up going with a lot more items. But um, I love Deauville's and I especially love the new ones now because you do have a, uh, another size that I think is a lot more manageable. It's not as large. Of course, they've always had the small and they've had the large, but now they have, I don't think it's called the medium, uh, but I love the size that it has. And I also like the fact that the new ones come with a pouch. Uh, and I, I'm just a sucker for the Deauvilles. Uh, they're very large bags. And I know sometimes I end up overloading this bag just because I like to carry everything in the kitchen sink and I'm a sucker for totes. Uh, but I think that they're wonderful bags, especially in the raffia material. I can't recommend this one enough. Uh, just because personally, uh, as I said before, I've had this bag for four or five years and I haven't had any issues with wear and tear uh, on the corners or anything like that. It still looks pretty good. And I have put this bag through the ringer. I have used it uh, quite a bit and there are no stains or anything like that. I think it's wonderful. It can get pretty heavy and I do end up using an organizer in this bag. Uh, but uh, I think it's wonderful and I really love the large ones as well because you have two different ways of being able to carry it either as a hand carry bag or the crook of your arm and then you also have the option for a shoulder bag but uh, they are wonderful they are wonderful handbags I highly recommend them if you're in the market for a new uh, fabric tote I think that these are great they are pretty pricey considering the materials that they're made out of I mean the raffia is pretty much it's palm and then you have some less Leather, unless you end up going for an all leather uh, Deauville. Um, so they can be pretty pricey for the materials that you're getting if you go for the for the fabric ones or for the uh, the raffia ones. But I definitely do think that they end up um, they end up holding up very well, and they also end up uh, holding their resale value very well uh, too. So I just had to throw that out there. But love the Deauvilles, and I don't know. I might get rid of that pink one. I don't know. I don't know. It's not necessarily on the chopping block j just yet uh, because I still enjoy it, as I said before, but I don't know. <laughs> so a uh, huge, huge fan of the Deauvilles. Uh, okay, next question. Do you still have your Chanel Jumbo Classic Flap? I do. Here it is right here. It is in the black caviar leather with a gold hardware. As many of you know, this was my holy grail when it came to this fashion house. I love this bag. I think it's beautiful. Uh, it's large, obviously, the jumbo, and it holds 
all of my daily essentials and then some. It can get somewhat heavy, uh, but I think I think it is absolutely gorgeous. And with this one, it's funny because when I first got it, um, how long ago did I get it? I think eight years ago. I think it was eight years ago. Uh, when I first got it, I, I couldn't put it down. And then I kind of went into a slump wherein, when I didn't really use it. I think it even made my least used bags uh, video or my list, I think two or three years in a row. Um, which is kind of crazy, right? Because you'd think you would use a Holy Grail bag all the time, but yeah, I went into a slump. I didn't really use it. And now it's a bag that I, uh, definitely end up incorporating a lot more than, uh, than before. So I'm really, I'm really happy about that, but it looks like the day that I got it probably because there were a few years when I didn't really use it, but it's still one of my favorites and it's still a gorgeous bag. And I love the gold hardware with the black caviar leather. It is it is pretty amazing, but um, I remember when I got that bag. Um, I know I've talked about it on Minx Mondays before, but <laughs> I was so nervous and I felt like I had my heart in my throat because I'm like, am I really doing this? Am I really spending this much money on a bag? Like, what is wrong with you? But um, I got over that <laughs> pretty quickly. <laughs> but uh, anywho, uh, so yes, yeah, still have the jumbo, still going strong. That is a forever bag. I will never, ever get rid of it. Uh, even though there were times when I thought about selling it, uh, no, that, that was crazy talk, right? That was definitely crazy talk. Next question, Chanel flap square or rectangular mini? Uh, I think both of them are beautiful and I've seen videos where people have both the square and the rectangular mini and they're able to fit the same amount of items in both of the bags, even though it might seem like the rectangular uh, has a little bit more space. Uh, but for me personally, I definitely end up preferring the rectangular mini more than the square, uh, just because I think that, I don't know if it, to me it just seems like it's a little bit more proportionate than the the square just because the square looks like it's I don't know maybe it's because it's a little bit taller than uh, than this one that it looks a little bit odd to me to a certain extent but don't get me wrong I think it is absolutely beautiful uh, but I do definitely prefer the rectangular now what I will say when it comes to the square it's a size that you don't see as often as you do the rectangular mini now both of them whether it's the rectangular or the square minis are very elusive pieces that uh, they are very hard to get but between the two it seems like nowadays you see a lot more rectang uh, rectangular minis than uh, than you do the squares the squares I think were a lot more popular maybe even 10 years ago 10, 15 years ago. And even still over the last few years, they have incorporated more squares into the seasons, into the seasonal colors, but still you end up seeing more of the rectangular. And I think that because the square is a, is a size that you don't see too often, uh, because it's one that they don't release, uh, as often as they do the rectangular, uh, it's even more popular and it's, it's highly sought after as well. But like I said before, both of them are highly sought after, but the square uh, definitely ends up, uh, I think sometimes being a little bit more on top because it is so hard to find. Uh, but as I said previously, I personally prefer the rectangular just because it seems like it's a little bit more proportionate to, um, I don't know, to a bag, even though they both end up fitting the same amount of items. One, one is just longer, the other one's a little bit taller. So I don't know, but whether it's rectangular, square, or any mini, I, <laughs> I am definitely a fan for sure. Next question, your opinion on luxury collabs, i.e. Balenciaga and Gucci, Fendace, Louis Vuitton and Nike, etc. Uh, I am a huge fan of luxury collabs. I know that um, Gucci is also teaming up with Adidas uh, and they have a collection that's due to launch, I think within the next couple of weeks, if it hasn't launched already. Uh, but I am a huge fan of collaborations, especially when they are two luxury houses, kind of like Balenciaga and Gucci, uh, just because it seems like many of these fashion houses are always in competition with one another, right? They're always trying to one up each other they're always trying to keep up with the Joneses type of thing. And when you see two fashion houses come together and make something fabulous, you can actually see the camaraderie between the two. I think it's wonderful. I, and I really wish that more, more fashion houses did this. I think it makes their pieces very unique. It makes them, um, obviously creates a frenzy. Uh, but I am all for collaborations. I, th I think it's great. I think it's absolutely fabulous to see, again, two brands, uh, whether they are luxury or not, just come together and make some fabulous pieces, especially when both of those 
uh, brands are able to mesh well and you can still see each one represented perfectly on the items that they end up um, that they end up offering. So I am a big, big fan. Are you guys a fan of uh, collaborations, whether it's luxury or just in general? Are you a fan of collaborations? Let me know in the comment section down below. Um, all right, next question. Uh, I'd love to hear your words of wisdom on why we can never get enough of handbags. I could go shopping in my own closet and still want more. Second, why do you and so many women love Chanel bags so much? It always seems to me they make a woman look 10 years older than her years. They give me some kind of granny vibe. Except the Chanel 19, of course. Sorry, ladies. Why is that? Okay. <laughs> uh, all right. So the first one, why is it that we can never get enough of handbags? I really don't know. I really don't know. You guys have heard me talk about, you know, my love for handbags, uh, that it's it's deep rooted. I've loved handbags since, I mean, since I was a kid. They've always been, <laughs> obviously not luxury, right? Uh, but I've always had a thing for, for handbags. It's, I, I really don't know. I don't know if it's because it's an extension of my personality. Um, it's the way that I like to express myself because like for me personally, I'm not, I'm not fashionable whatsoever. It's not like I'm out there, you know, dressing to the nines or, um, or anything like that. So I think that with handbags for myself, it's a way for me to be able to express my personality and what better way to do that than with than with the bag. And I don't know, sometimes when I use a bag, um, it just makes me feel, I don't, I, I sound, I sound crazy, but it makes me feel a certain way. And my apologies for not being able to articulate it better, but it just, it puts a smile on my face. And if I'm having a really crappy day, and if I go to reach for, like, let's say, the Prada bag with crystals, or if I go for a red bag or a pink bag or any bag at all, sometimes it has a way of just completely changing my mood and just putting an extra spring in my step. So that's, I guess that's what handbags mean to me. <laughs> it brings me such joy. And yes, it's something tangible. Yes, it's a tangible good. Uh, and I don't think that tangible goods are the only thing that, that can bring a smile to your face because obviously you guys know how I feel about family as well. Um, but when it comes to tangible goods, when it comes to handbags, it does give me, I don't know, it definitely puts me in a different, it elevates my mood. It definitely elevates it elevates my mood. And I think that's 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 the thing for many people when it comes to their hobbies. They enjoy their hobby because it makes them happy. So <laughs> handbags are definitely my hobby. They're definitely my thing. But I would love to know, why do you think we can't get enough of handbags? Let me know in the comment section down below. And to answer your second question, why do you and so many women love Chanel bags so much? All right, so let's bring this bad boy back out. <laughs> let's bring back out the, uh, the jumbo. Now, I can only speak for myself, and uh, I have heard that many of times, whether it's from friends and family or from people on the internet, uh, that the Chanel bags, uh, they're very old looking, they're very mature, uh, they make you look older 10, 15, 20 years, it gives them granny vibes, kind of like what you said. Uh, they're ugly bags, you know, you name it, I've heard it. And uh, I must respectfully disagree. I think that Chanel bags are absolutely fabulous for a few different reasons. For me personally, I love the history that they have. Um, I love the fact that they don't have too many bells and whistles. Now, of course, there are Chanel bags out there that have a ton of bells and whistles that I'm personally not a fan of. And it's not like I love every single Chanel bag that's out there because that's definitely not the case either. Uh, but the ones that I have within my collection, uh, I don't think they have too many bells and whistles. I think that these exude a type of, of beauty that some of the other bags within my collection or some of the other brands in my collection don't necessarily do the same way. Uh, and these quilts, these quilts, I'm a big fan, whether it's on the classic flap or whether it's on the reissue, there's something about these quilts, again, that I think that this fashion house ends up perfecting better than anybody. And it's like one of those things that when I see quilts from far away, almost instantly, I know that it's a Chanel bag, you know? And I don't know if that has something to do with it as well, 
But um, I think that when it comes to these bags, I think that they're very easy to dress up and dress down, whether you end up dressing to the nines or whether you are the most casual dresser on the planet like I am. I think that they're very easy to incorporate into any lifestyle, and I think that they look fabulous at any age. And you guys have heard me say this before, age is just a number. I don't think that just because you're 20 or 30 means that you have to wear this and you have to wear that. Just like I don't think that just because you're 50, 60, and 70 means that you have to wear this and you have to be you have to have that grandma vibe. You have to have that grandma look. Definitely not. Absolutely not. So as I said before, uh, I respectfully disagree. Uh, I think that these look fabulous at any age, at all ages, and um, I am definitely a sucker for them because they are very easy to dress up and dress down, very easy to incorporate into any lifestyle, into any age, into any wardrobe. So that's, um, <laughs> that's how I feel about Chanel bags for sure. All right, next question. Uh, hang on, my phone is dying. Uh, okay. Are there any duplicates in your collection? Uh, yes, I do. I have two duplicates. I have two Louis Vuitton key pouches in the monogram canvas, and I also have two Louis Vuitton six ring key holders in the monogram canvas. I actually got my hands on the duplicates last year. Uh, just because I was like, you know what, I'm going to jump on them. Uh, you never know when I might need them again. Uh, but these guys, there is a huge age gap between the two. We're talking 15, 20 years between the two. And these guys are still going strong. Uh, obviously, they have a ton of wear and tear on the hardware. Um, I also have some peeling on the canvas on my, on my key pouch. I don't know if you guys can see it or not right there. But uh, I have put these two through the ringer. And like I said, they're still going strong, but I bought these as a, I bought these as a just in case. You never know when you might need them again. You never know when these are gonna just fall apart and I can no longer use them. And uh, that's why I decided to go for them. But yeah, these are the only duplicates that I have uh, within my collection, these two. And it just so happens that they are two of my top three SLGs of all time. But what about you guys? Do you guys have duplicates within your collection? If you do, let us know in the comments section down below. Next question, Chanel O pouch or Louis Vuitton mini pochette? All right, so here I have the Louis Vuitton mini pochette in the monogram canvas. And here is the Chanel O pouch or the Beauty CC pouch in the pink caviar leather with the champagne gold hardware. Here they are side by side. Uh, I absolutely love both of these small leather goods. Both of them are always in heavy rotation within my collection, but out of the two, hands down, I still end up preferring the mini pochette. Really, it's because this one, I feel like you can end up incorporating it a lot more into your collection than you can with this one. Um, with the uh, with the pouch, with the Chanel pouch, I love it as a, uh, as a wallet just because I don't have to fold my bills as much. I'm still able to fit pretty much all of the contents of a larger wallet in here, no problem. Uh, it is a little bit more slender, so I'm able to fit this inside of my smaller handbags very, uh, very nicely as well. So I do like that aspect. But if I start to put, uh, if I start to use this as a catch-all and I start to put more lipsticks in here or if I end up putting like my headache medicine or my keys in here, it starts to get really wonky really, really quickly. And um, it just, it looks a little bit odd. Whereas with the mini pochette, it is a little bit wider. So I feel like you can really get away with carrying more in here, whether that's to use it as a wallet, as a catch-all, as a little mini handbag, uh, whatever the case may be, I still think that you have a lot more options on how you can incorporate and how you can incorporate this item into your collection. And if you wanted to add a longer chain and use it as a little mini handbag, you have that option or use it as a wristlet. So um, as much as I love these and as crazy as I am about them, I still think that this one takes the cake between the two. And it would be really nice to see uh, Chanel do the Beauty CC pouch. Um, that is a little bit wider that also has a chain because I think that would be the most um, comparable item to the mini pochette. Uh, but um, yeah, that guy definitely ends up taking the cake for me still. Uh, okay, next question. Do you still use your bum bag? I do, and I brought it out. So we have even more eye candy, but here it is. Love, love, love this bag. Uh, it is incredible. It is by far one of the most comfortable shoulder bags I have within my collection. It's very easy to use. And uh, I also love how spacious it is. It's very comfortable. Uh, mine definitely has um, patinaed quite a bit. 
um, I do have that wrinkling that remember the wrinkling that I was talking about on the extra small keep ball this is what I was talking about on the uh, on the bum bag it was a lot more noticeable uh, when I first got it because you did have that really fresh uh, that leather and now that it has aged you don't see it as much but um, I absolutely love this bag I never thought in a million years I would be as crazy about this bag as I am I, I just think it's it's awesome is it a forever bag maybe maybe I'm not gonna say necessarily it's it's there just yet uh, but it is a bag that I definitely use quite a bit and it's always in heavy heavy rotation as well um, all right next question do luxury shoes from Louis Vuitton etc wear better than shoes from brands like Nike Vans etc in my opinion no I definitely don't think so I've had both um, now I have pretty much sold off the almost like 75% to 85% of my luxury shoes. I think I have eight pairs left. Um, so I've had both, but in my opinion and in my experience, no, I don't think that luxury shoes wear better than regular everyday shoes. And I think it's because luxury shoes, they look better and they're not necessarily meant to be as hard wearing as regular shoes because it's a luxury shoe. Now, don't get me wrong. I know that they... There are also shoes that are made out of, you know, all leather and uh, they're amazing and they're this and they're that. But for the most part, I feel that most luxury shoes are just meant to look good, not because they're very hard wearing at all. Like that's not the purpose of it. It's not, you know, the, the shoe isn't supposed to last you 50 years uh, as you would maybe a Converse or a Vans. So for me, I have Converse and Vans that I have had for no joke, like 10, 15 years, they're still going strong. And I've had luxury shoes that have started to fall apart very quickly, you know? And um, I, I, yeah, I just, I don't think that they wear better. Definitely not. Plus, I think that some, some of these luxury shoes take inspiration from, you know, the everyday brands, if you will. Like there are the, uh, what's that, what is that shoe called? Um, is it the Trocadero? Is that what it is from Louis Vuitton? It looks exactly like the Vans Authentic shoe. And then, of course, the Dior, um, what is it, Airwalk or Walk on Air, whatever it is. The Dior shoes look exactly like, Com like Converse. So, no. <laughs> I don't think luxury shoes are supposed to be hard-wearing and wear better. They're just supposed to look better because they're luxury. I don't know. That's those are just my two cents, you know? Okay, other brands that you like uh, other than Louis Vuitton and Chanel. Um, I, I am pretty open to any and all brands to be completely honest with you. Uh, I am definitely having some major love for Balenciaga at the moment, even though I'm not a fan of their sneakers. Uh, Balenciaga, those two bags have been uh, wonderful. Um, I've also, I also have a soft spot for Lueve. Uh, I think it's a very underrated brand and it should definitely get more love. I know that we talked about this in our last MMQA. Um, Gucci, I'm also loving a lot of Gucci items, which I didn't, I didn't really love Gucci before. I had Gucci back in the day. I didn't have the best experience. I kind of swore them off for, for quite a, you know, quite a while. And then I started to revisit them again and I really like their pieces. So yeah, I'm pretty open to any and all brands and I am not a handbag snob whatsoever. Give me, give me luxury, give me contemporary. Yeah, I love them all. What can I say? I just love bags. <laughs> Um, all right, uh, next question. Do you still love and use your classic Chanel wallet on chain in black caviar? I do, and here it is. A black caviar leather with a gold hardware. Uh, this is definitely one of my forever pieces, and I get many people that ask me, what would be a great first bag from Chanel? Uh, should it be the mini? Should it be a classic flap? Should it be this? Should it be that? In all honesty, I really do end up thinking that this is one of the best first pieces that you can get from the brand just because you can incorporate it into your lifestyle various ways and you can really get a feel for the brand, for the quality without necessarily having to break the bank. And the fact that you can use this either as a wallet, as a catch-all or as a handbag, uh, I think is wonderful. And uh, this is still one of my top uh, travel bags of all time because it doesn't take a lot of space. And as many of you guys know, I'm not a big fan of using even though I love big bags in everyday life, I don't 
really like using big bags when I travel. I don't like carrying a bunch of bags with me when I travel either. I just want to get in and out of the hotel, go see what I'm going to see without having to worry about, okay, how many bags do I have back at the hotel? Or what am I, what's this, what's going on with that? So literally one of the best travel bags out there. And I still absolutely think that is one of the best uh, handbags from the fashion house. Next question. Uh, do you think that you will pull the trigger one day and buy a Louis Vuitton leather bag for over 3k? No, <laughs> I definitely don't think so. Unless, unless it is a monogram eclipse on prompt leather, never full, and then it's three grand, then absolutely I will. But other than that, no, absolutely not. I think the most expensive, um, bag I've purchased from Louis Vuitton. Was it my Alma and the Noir Magnetic? No, it was my Vernice Cerise Alma. I think that was 2200 or 21. I can't remember how much it was to be honest, but I believe that was the most expensive handbag that I have purchased from the brand. Uh, and I get a lot of people that ask me, uh, I know that I've also touched base on this before. Um, if I'll ever get leather bags from Louis Vuitton, I used to have leather, uh, not just canvas pieces within my collection from the fashion house. Uh, I've had Epi, I've had Vernie, I've had Emprunt, uh, and I still have Emprunt in my collection now. But in my personal opinion, I think that Louis Vuitton does canvas better than anybody in the business, which is why I prefer to go for their canvas canvas pieces. Um, but again, to answer your question, no, I, I sincerely don't think that I would end up paying $3,000 for a leather bag from Louis Vuitton. I just rather put the $3,000 towards another fashion house that has a leather handbag. I think that many other fashion houses do leather a lot better than Louis Vuitton. And just in my experience of, on the leather pieces that I have had, um, but again, I, I really don't see that happening. Uh, all right. Next question is, uh, why is Sal a good brand to invest in right now? I don't really, um, I know that this is an unpopular opinion, but I don't see handbags as investments. Uh, so I would say that St. Laurent is a great brand um, because of the quality that you're getting for the price point that they are for the most part. I think that they have some wonderful pieces, whether it's some of their most popular bags like the college bag, the Lulu, uh, the Lulu puffer. Uh, and then of course you have the Kate. They have so many different uh, bags that are very, very popular. And because of their popularity, they have also started to hold their resale value a lot better than before, which I think is wonderful to see because before Saint Laurent, um, they didn't, I mean, anytime you looked on the pre-love market, you can see some of their pieces for either 60 to 75% off retail price. Uh, or not, maybe that's a little too extreme, uh, but maybe 50% off what you would end up paying uh, at, the, at the boutique versus getting it um, on the pre-love market. So it's really nice to see that because of their popularity, they're also holding their resale value a lot better. But I've had a lot of people say that the Saint Laurent pieces that they have within their collection are some of the best wearing leather bags that they have within their collection. I know that the Kate bag that I have within my collection has been wearing very well too. Uh, so I think that Saint Laurent, again, you get a lot of bang for your buck. You get a lot of quality for the price point that their pieces are and their small leather goods, especially their pebbled leather, I think is out of this world. You guys have heard me say that many, many of times. Next question. If you could only pick one, would you choose the Nano Speedy or the Keep All Extra Small and why? Uh, all right. So I brought them both out. So here we have the Louis Vuitton Extra Small Keep All in the Reverse Monogram Eclipse and the Louis Vuitton Nano Speedy in the Monogram Canvas. I love them both. Obviously, I've had the Nano Speedy a lot longer than I've had the Extra Small Keep All. And if I could only pick one, hands down, I would end up picking the Extra Small Keep All for a few different reasons. I love the fact that it comes with a removable, adjustable strap. I love the fact that it is the Reverse Monogram Eclipse canvas. I think it is stunning. It's very easy. It's very carefree. I don't have to worry about uh, water stains. I don't have to worry about patina or anything like that. And even though I love the Nano Speedy, the fact that I have had to alter it in order for it to work out for my lifestyle and be that much more versatile is really the main reason why I'm not picking this bag. Uh, plus, I really like the fact that the extra small keep all has a, um, it has a, it has more length to it. So I'm able to fit my items in here a little bit easier and I'm able to see things at a glance better than the Nano Speedy. But both of them are wonderful. Both of them are great. I just definitely end up, um, I prefer, <laughs> I prefer this guy. And um, yeah, I, I think it's awesome. It definitely has, it checks off all the marks for me for sure. Next question, what are your thoughts 
thoughts on the new Louis Vuitton Micro Matisse. Oh my goodness, these little Micro Matisses are so incredibly cute. Obviously, you can either go for the all leather, the emprunt in the, uh, I think there's three different colors, the turtle dove, if I'm not mistaken, or is it beige, uh, the pink and the yellow, uh, or you can go for the green one. I think the green one, is in, isn't it in like that terry cloth material? I can't remember, but I think that they are so insanely cute. Uh, I know that my very good friend, Monique. She recently got a green one. She shared it on Instagram and uh, they're adorable. They're really, there's like super, super small, but I think she was able to fit a little bit more than you might think in those little bags. Uh, but I do think that they have a hefty price point for the size that they are but there's no denying that they are absolutely adorable. Next question, do you have any love-hate relationships with any of your purses, and if so, which? Um, not anymore. <laughs> not anymore. I got rid of the last one that I had the love-hate relationship with, and that was the Chanel um, lambskin top handle vanity, what have you. Uh, yeah, that bag. It was beautiful, but it was such a pain in the ass to get in and out of, and just the quality of it was not what I thought it was going to be. Uh, so yeah, I, um, I said uh, goodbye to that one, and because of that, I said hello to the extra small people. So no more of the love-hate relationship bags. But if I do get more love-hate relationships, I will definitely let you guys know. Uh, okay, next question. What are your thoughts on the new purple and orange Marc Jacobs totes? Okay, so like I said earlier that we were gonna get into the Marc Jacobs totes. Uh, they have now released these totes. I think it's also, obviously that's the mini. I think they have it in the small as well. I could be wrong, but they now have them in orange, this beautiful orange and purple. Neither of these two colors are colors that I normally end up going for, but the orange is definitely speaking to me. <laughs> I am starting to acquire more of a love for the color orange, says the girl wearing orange, right? But um, <laughs> these these totes are seriously going to be the death of me. They are so cute, but I just had to throw that out there just in case you guys were looking at this tote and maybe you weren't feeling the pink or any of the colors that they have available. Now they have orange and purple and that purple is absolutely gorgeous. I will put a link to those bags if you guys want to check them out uh, on the uh, description box below. Uh, all right, next question. Thoughts on Chanel resellers. I'm tired of seeing bags from new collections at twice the price. Uh, I'm not a big fan of resellers. I do appreciate the fact that if someone is really looking for something and they can't find it in the boutique and there's this, I mean, this crazy uh, wait list for it, the fact that resellers have many of these pieces and you're able to get the dream piece that you wanted, I think is wonderful but I'm not a fan of the premium prices. Uh, and I am and I definitely don't like them even more because, because of them, that's why they started to implement a lot of these restrictions on people buying from the boutique. So even if you have someone that isn't spending like $25,000 a month on, a ba on bags, uh, the fact that they put a limit on how much people can buy it's kind of crazy to me and it's really because of resellers but yeah not a fan of the of the premium prices uh, I realize that that's you know the whole supply and demand which is another reason why uh, the pre-love market is the way that it is because of supply and demand I get that I understand that I understand that it's a business so as I said before I do realize that resellers give people the possibility to be able to acquire uh, a dream piece that they otherwise would not be able to get in the boutique either because of uh, this or because of that so I do think that's great but they have also had such an impact on the limits and uh, boutique experiences in general because of resellers. Again, this is what I have been told. This is what I have seen. You guys might have heard something different. Uh, so yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of resellers either. Next question. What do you think of the revamped version of the toiletry pouch 26 compared to the old model? Is it worth the price? Uh, all right. So this new toilette 26 uh, retails for 1080 here in the States. And uh, from what I saw on the website, the biggest difference between the toiletry pouch 26 and this one is the fact that this one has the leather uh, on the sides. It also has the washable fabric interior as well as four credit card slots, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, it reminds me of the Pochette Voyage. Uh, do I think that it warrants the price point? Not necessarily, but at the same time, if you were to add an organizer to this bag, an organizer that you can add a chain to it, you can turn this SL
XLG into a handbag and it has a great price point because now you have that leather on the side uh, that it's very carefree. You have the four credit card slots on the interior. You have the washable uh, fabric interior as well. So if you were to, if you were to, uh, add a little bit more to it, you know, in the form of an organizer and a chain. The fact that you can turn it into a handbag, uh, I think is great, definitely. I'm personally not a fan of it, uh, but um, the, the additions that they did to it, I think make it a little bit more versatile in a sense. So uh, is it worth the price? Ultimately, if you see yourself using the item quite a bit and if it really speaks to you, then by all means, I think that it's worth it. And the last question, do you think big bags will come back soon? I think big bags are already here and I am loving it. Uh, I think that a lot of these fashion houses are no longer just sticking to the trend. Uh, I think that a lot of them are now offering small bags, medium bags, large bags, what have you, because that way they're able to capture even more sales they're not just focused on one certain size, um, but uh, big bags. I mean, I, I absolutely love larger bags. There's definitely something about them and it doesn't have to necessarily be a tote, even though I'm a tote girl. And speaking of big bags, I have to incorporate this next bag into this video because I saw it last week and when I saw it, my jaw dropped. I was like, oh my God, this bag is Gorgeous, it is absolutely gorgeous. I am talking about the Saint Laurent I Care Maxi Shopping Bag in the quilted lambskin leather. I think this bag is beyond gorgeous. It is insanely massive in the best possible way. It has an obnoxious uh, logo that I absolutely love as well. And it definitely gives me 90s vibes and I'm here for it. I'm absolutely here for this bag. I love the fact that it comes with a pouch. Uh, I'm a sucker for pouches. When bags come with pouches, I absolutely love that. Um, now it does come in at $39.90. So it does have a hefty price point, but you are getting all lambskin. So I think, I think that's great. Uh, now, even though I love this bag and I'm just kind of like, my eyes are drooling, my mouth is drooling when I see it. Um, I don't think it'll end up aging the best just because it really doesn't have any structure to it. Uh, it's meant to be a slouchy bag, obviously. Uh, I think if you were to put an organizer in there, I think that would definitely end up helping it out. But uh, because it is the lambskin, I imagine it's gonna be very, very soft and I imagine it might not age the best. So it might, it, it'll definitely end up turning into that beautiful mess. Um, but it's one of those bags that even though it has a lot of red flags for me personally, um, I still, <laughs> I still absolutely love it. Would I pull the trigger on it? I don't know. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I don't know. Part of me says yes. Part of me says no. Um, but I, I think it's gorgeous. It definitely reminds me of a bag that I would have seen uh, in Vogue magazine in the 90s or whatever. I just, I, I think it's, I think it's beautiful. I think it is absolutely beautiful. And that logo is massive. The size is massive. But again, in the best possible way, in my opinion, I know it's not everyone's cup of tea. I know some people don't really like the in your face logos, but, um, I definitely do. <laughs> I definitely do. So I had to share that bag with you guys. So that does it for this week's MMQA. I have no idea what we're sitting at time-wise, but I always have a lot of fun filming these. And uh, I know that I have started to kind of switch it up a little bit by doing the rapid answer and the rapid question. Let me know, is that something that you guys enjoy? Because I do try to incorporate more questions into these videos than I did before. Instead of just focusing on maybe five or six questions, I try to get as much information into one video as I possibly can. So again, let me know if, uh, if you guys like the rapid question, rapid answer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but um, yeah, and look, my hair stayed down. It's still hot. It's still pretty, it's still pretty hot. I feel like my upper lip is sweating pretty bad. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but... Yeah, I'm a, I'm a hot mess right now. <laughs> but anywho, that does it for our MMQA video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure and give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already and you would like to, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll see you guys later. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day.